So we've seen in the amazing garden that we saw how wonderful pavers were used within the garden space. So how about making your own? Have you ever tried it? Um, well, we're going to give you the steps today how to make your own pavers. It really is simple and easy, and once you've done it, you're going to be wowed and amazed. So there are a couple of things that you need. Number one is you're going to need a mould. And the mould that we've got here is available from Seabor. And if you go to their website, which is www.seabor.co.za, that's with an S, um, you'll be able to find out where you can purchase these. But they're round ones, rectangular ones, square ones, whatever you want. And they've already all done. Plastic moulds, got all the cool kind of crevices in here that you're wanting to get that look of a paver. So we've got that. What we've done as well, just to add a little bit of interest, is that we're going to make an inset into the paver. So we've taken some pebbles and we've stuck them onto a piece of plastic. And we're actually going to show you how to make your very own hopscotch. Whether you want plain pavers or pavers with something else, you could even put some mosaic inside it. But here we've used a number two. Now remember, whenever you're doing this, that whatever you put down has to be the reverse. Because when you turn the paver over, um, then you might end up with something else. So the easy numbers to go for are one and two or eight, because then you know that you'll never get them upside down. So first thing that we need to do is just get a bit of ordinary cooking oil. And we're going to take the cooking oil with just a little tissue, and we're going to place that along the bottom, much like when you're baking a cake. And this is just going to act as a kind of lubricant so that when you do remove the paver that it is easier to get out. So just put a little bit of, of that, not too much, just as a gentle application all the way around the paver. Right. So the next step is to take whatever you've made, whatever number you've made, and remember here you could do anything. You could use tiles. We've just used some pebbles that we've stuck down onto here just with silicone, or you can use something like No More Nails, which you just stick it onto the plastic. And here, once again, it could be pebbles, it could be bits of tile, it could be marbles. You could really do anything that your heart desires to get a kind of shape that you're wanting, or anything, a picture. And then you just take this, and, Garth, maybe you grab that side. I'd hate these guys to fall. And you just put that down and position that in place because then, of course, the concrete that we're going to mix is going to go on top of this and is going to go around this, which will be your moulding. So, Garth, what mixture would you recommend that we use for the pavers? Well, we're going to use a, a four, 4 to one mix, which means a four-part stone, two parts sand and one part cement. Okay, well that's easy enough. Shall we get mixing it? And now we're going to mix it all in well together before we add the liquid into it. And to add a bit of zing to our pavers, we're going to add a blue oxide into it. So we're going to have bright blue, cool, funky hopscotch pavers. Your general instruction with oxide is to use 5 kgs for every big bag of cement. Now, that's if you're mixing a huge quantity. So we're just going to put a little bit in and, um, woo, cool, look how blue it is. And mix it in. Garth, how do you think we go? More? Yeah, you can put more in, can you? The more the, the brighter. The bluer it is. Cool. I think we'll just add some more. Once it's all mixed in well, you then start adding in the liquid. And this consistency shouldn't be too runny, but it shouldn't be too stiff either, because you've still got to be able to work with it and remember, get it into the mold.
Okay, so it's all mixed in, and you can see that the stone still is quite visible within the mixture. And remember, the stone is what gives your paving or any concrete mixture its strength. And it is going to look quite chunky, and that's also okay. This is how it should be. The cement is still a bit runny in between, and then you've got your stones. And our blue oxide is nicely mixed in there. So now it's just a matter of putting it into the paver. Remember, when you are going to be putting your cement mixture into your mold, to make sure your mold is on a sturdy, solid base. Because obviously, if your soil or the base that you're going to be putting on is not level, well, then you're not going to end up with a cool paver. So, on a level base, we're ready for action, and it goes, Bath. Once your mixture is in, just use a small trowel, build this trowel, and all you want to do is just make sure that it gets all into the corners, agitated a bit, so that you get all the air pockets out, and you simply do that by just poking it around and making sure that it gets in nicely. There we go. Once you've agitated the concrete, all you need to do is using the back of the trowel is just smooth it off and try and get it as smooth as possible because remember this is going to be the bottom of your paver so it doesn't need to be perfect. Smooth it off, there we go. And last bit that we need to do is get a bit of plastic and you're going to cover it up. And remember just to put a weight on either side. There we go and over here, and what that does is it helps to improve the curing process. We're gonna leave it like this for about 24 hours, and thereafter we'll be able to pop out the paver and reveal to you what a cool guy this is gonna look like. So this is one of the pavers that we molded 24 hours ago. It's now dried. Remember that when you are removing the paver out of the mold and you have only waited 24 hours it still is going to be a little wet so do be gentle with it and the way to do it is turn it over there you go and it should just pop off just like that you can still see the bits of oil that was in here and that's the reason why you do it because it doesn't stick at all and then what we need to do is now remove the bit of plastic that we had. And there is our number two. And if you want to see it the right way, I'll turn it around. There we go, there's our number two, molded into our paver. And how cool is that? If you left it just like this and put this in the garden, it'll look absolutely fab. You can see the bits of the blue oxide that have come through. And remember, in oxides, your choice is endless. You can get charcoals, yellows, anything that you really want to work with. And once again, like I said, you can do all sorts of patterns in here. So there we've got one paver down. And I'm going to take you now, and we're going to go and have a look at how we put this into a garden and showed you how cool it looks right at the end.